Well, here we are two weeks into a brand new decade and I don't know about anyone else, but time here in 2020 is doing some pretty weird stuff. It seems to both be an absolute age that's passed since the festive break and yet also no time at all. The weeks they have dragged on monstrously. That first one back after the festive break, if you were off for that period of time and then had to go back to work, oh good lord, it did not end. And yet, in amongst all of that, have we managed to get any more knitting done than usual? No. No. Very much no. <laughs> Let's unpack that one, shall we? Hello there, Pickles, and welcome to episode 37 of the Knitting Vicariously podcast. My name is Caroline. I'm found more commonly across Instagram and Ravelry as Dunderknit. I'm a knitter living here in London, and if this is your first time joining us here in the podcast, hello and welcome to you. A very quick word just to note up front that this is a swearing-friendly podcast, and therefore the language, it does have a tendency to get a little colourful from time to time. If that's not your bag, I totally appreciate it. This won't be the podcast that best fits you, but the good news is there are plenty of others out there for you to enjoy. If, however, you're a returning viewer or indeed the swears bear absolutely no boundaries, no barriers to you whatsoever, you are very welcome here and I really do hope that you're well. Yeah, as I mentioned right up front, good lord this year is already doing some freaky stuff when it comes to the whole passage of time thing going on. I genuinely don't know about anyone else but I'm somewhere between that weird good lord how is it only the second week of January and thank Christ it is only the second week of January because this year um, particularly sort of work-wise I've got a few projects that are running on at the moment with uh, the day job that just make me very glad that time isn't passing as quickly as it occasionally feels as though it might do but yeah it's it's that weird interstitial like start to the year when you're still kicking things off and people still keep saying happy new year to you even though that shouldn't be a thing anymore it's past the 17th people get it together anyway um it's been yeah it's been a, a fun and just full-on start to the year and uh, i hope that wherever you are with it that it has been treating you well thus far as ever, thank you so much to everyone for your very, very kind words and summaries from the previous podcast. Um, a lot of you took a few minutes just to tell me a little bit more around the baby knits that I've been working on, the uh, cowl that I had from my mum. There were a lot of you that uh, made references that somehow conjoined the two and uh, took great delight in telling me that certainly, I presume in the US at least, the combined scarf cowl affair, which I uh, found the affectionate moniker of a scowl uh, to fit, you say is actually referred to as a dicky over in the US and that gave me no end of just entertainment and general tittering that happened to that effect because we've established that my sense of humour is nothing if not not entirely juvenile <laughs> but the good news is a good few of you came with me on that and uh, so thank you so much for doing that. Dicky does not feel right in my book. I don't know if it's I'm presuming, and UK friends, please do keep me honest on this, I'm presuming this is very much a US-centric term because it's not one that I've heard bandied around on this side of the pond. Um, to me it's almost more of a, a sort of cowl scarf tabardy thing and therefore I mean I kind of want to call it like a skull bard, <laughs> which makes it sound like something Philip Pullman would write about. But you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a dicky doesn't sit well with me, so to speak. I'm gonna move on. In other news up front this week, our blame dundering it along, the end point is fast approaching. There are under two weeks left if you wish to cast on with wild abandon and allow me to take full accountability for whatever indiscretions you may choose to make on your own time. This is whether you wish to cast on something frivolously, whether you wish to make purchases in order to facilitate that frivolous cast on. I am here for you. I have your back. It is entirely my fault. And so you still have a couple of weeks to get that underway. If you do want to 
to continue on projects that you've already started and see if you can get those finished, you are more than welcome to do so. I will be talking about the cowl itself a little bit later on and showcasing as ever some of your just incredibly inspiring projects that are giving me so much joy but I did also mention in the previous episode that I would spend a little bit of time this week talking about prize packages because yes in addition to having the accountability wholly divested from yourselves you can also be in with the chance of winning one of three prize packages that we've put together very specially for this. Now as I've mentioned previously the joy of this knit along is in that kind of, you know, um, divestment of accountability, the idea that you can just go nuts and cast on whatever you choose to and work on it. And I say cast on, but obviously we are a multi craft make along. So it can be casting, it can be sewing, it can be uh, crocheting, should you wish it, chaining on, it can be pretty much anything crafty that takes your fancy. I am very much here for it. But in doing so, whether it be posting about it in our Ravelry thread and just discussing with some of the others that are working along with it, whether it be posting your finished objects in our Ravelry FO thread or indeed whether it be using the blame dungeon along hashtag over on Instagram each time you do any one of those um, you are win you are in with the chance of winning one of our prize packages and as with last year I have had a huge amount of fun in piecing these together for you what I like to try and do with prize packages is pull together a few different things from some incredible makers that I've been uh, lucky enough to benefit from over the course of the year, whether it be um, bags or yarn that I've worked with, whether it be um, kind of makers that are new to me that I've had the chance to experience and, and by supporting them and their work, uh, being able to enjoy some of the things that they make. And this year is very definitely no exception. So with no further ado, there are some of these things that are still in the process of being finished, uh, being packaged up and being sent my way. So for this week when I'm talking about them I may include a couple of images as references rather than having the physical items here but I will have those here with me next time uh, to showcase when we are talking about the winners of the giveaways. So with no further ado let me make a start on that. A bumper giveaway could not be a bumper giveaway without the inclusion of a project bag. And those of you who've been watching the podcast over the course of this year will know that I have had the absolute joy of not only working with um, this, well, these incredible bags, but also meeting with this maker. Now, New of Hide and Hammer is an absolute genius when it comes to making these bags that are so incredibly not just well crafted but beautifully designed the creativity that goes into them the combinations that she comes up with are absolutely incredible and I know that from friends particularly those who live in the US um, who have seen her bags from afar just the the just being able to use and get to grips with some of news bags is an absolute delight. And so I am just over the moon to say that for each of the prize winners with the Blame Dungeon to Long giveaway, you will be winning a hide and hammer bag. It is one of her waxed canvas bags, specifically in the mustard colour, because gold. Let's be clear, I'm going to include a picture of them along here on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about, but these bags are absolutely stunning. I have one of these of my own. I absolutely adore it. It is the perfect size for any number of different projects because the way that it works is you can un sort of once they uncurl, unfold um, the neck of the bag itself, and had I been more prepared, I would have brought mine up to show you, but I wasn't. Um, you can unfold the neck of the bag itself and then have a very, very deep sort of um, cuboid type shape bag where you can fit anything from a tiny sock project all the way up to a sweater project. They are so incredibly versatile. And I am delighted to be able to include these bags here. Again, if you don't already follow New over on Instagram, please, please do so. I know she's been doing not only some incredible work in designing the bags and creating different kind of bespoke versions of those in previous weeks, and there will be a little bit of that in these bags as well, but also she has been doing some great work with some photographers to ensure that she's really showcasing her products to their full, full extent and capacity and just wonderful design. So 
Yeah, that is the first thing in the giveaway. You will be receiving a mustard wax canvas hide and hammer bag. And oh, I love mine so much. I'm delighted to be sharing it with you. In addition to bags, a giveaway like this wouldn't be a giveaway if we didn't also include some truly incredible yarn. And again, I am delighted to say that the yarn dyer here is someone whose yarn I've been lucky enough to work with over the course of this year. Those of you who remember, I took a pair of socks, well, what ended up being a pair of socks with me to Rhinebeck as some of my travel knitting this year. And that yarn was from a dyer that I'd had the wonderful for fortune to meet at not one but two yarn shows over the course of this year, both Unravel and indeed Fiber East. That is to say I was using some yarn by the wonderful Dusty Dimples who is a UK based hand dyer who makes some of the most beautiful colourways imaginable. Now when it came to putting together prize packages for this giveaway I was gently perusing Instagram as I want to do and Aisha had put up a combination of yarns that as soon as I saw it I knew this was the combination that I wanted to include for the giveaway. So stealing from her Instagram feed with pride, I have here two colorways together that are absolutely perfect. These are both on her Dusty Sock Base, which is her 75-25% Merino Nylon fingering weight. It is 100 grams, 425 meters in the Foxy and the Fui Mo colorways. Um, they are stunningly beautiful together. Let me hold them up so you can see and appreciate them together in all of their beauty. Obviously, I was vastly transfixed by this fantastic gold colour here at the top but in terms of how well the two play together just if you can see how incredibly delicate the speckles are on the free moss skein underneath here it's just astonishing these two they go together so beautifully whether you choose to use them together in a colour work project whether they could be striped whether they become part of something greater still and you're able to use them together along with another main colour for instance, I just think they're absolutely astonishing and so I am delighted to be using these alongside or to be offering these alongside the giveaway here. Um, Dusty Dimples Aisha is a fantastic yarn dyer as I say I always enjoy going to see her at festivals because she has some colourways that just glow in person and so to be able to include these here this foxy in particular is just astonishing. Um, the camera does a fairly good job of it I promise in reality it genuinely feels as though it's glowing from within so again I am delighted to be able to offer these as part of the giveaway as well. And alongside bags and yarn, where indeed would we be if we didn't also include a pattern in there as well? Not one pattern, but two, because the fabulous human that is Jen Emerson of Jen Emerson Designs has um, allowed us to be able to put into this prize package not one but two patterns in the form of her Jenica hat and Jenica cowl. Those of you who've been watching recently may remember I knit a version of the Jenica hat quite recently in that beautiful sort of um, soft dusky pink that I picked up, the Earl Grey Fibre Company from um, Rhinebeck earlier on this year from Indie Untangled. The Jenica pattern is one of my favourite hat patterns and of course there is a corresponding cowl for that as well. I'll put pictures of that up here on the screen for you to be able to see it. But yes, these are both wonderful patterns. Jen's patterns are incredibly well written. I particularly love the cable design in both of these, the Jenica cable, uh, Jenica sort of cable pattern that she uses across both. It's really, really kind of simple and straightforward to knit with cables, but it gives such a beautiful effect. And as with all of Jen's patterns, they are incredibly well written. So yes, delighted to be including those here as well for you to enjoy. Another maker that I've spent a little bit of time talking about in recent weeks is the wonderful Malika, who is Soraya. She is a UK-based um, jewellery designer who works a lot with sort of mixed media, crochet, um, sometimes yarn as well, to bring to life these incredible kind of jewellery and uh, metalwork designs that look 
absolutely beautiful. I've worn earrings from her on a couple of occasions. I bought one pair of earrings at the Make Joy event in November. I was then lucky enough to be given another pair from my mum for Christmas. And I was having a little look at her site to see if there was anything that we could um, use for this giveaway here and include in this giveaway that was perhaps not too prescriptive. I didn't want it to be um, sort of particularly I want to say sort of traditionally feminine jewellery in case that's not your bag and I stumbled across some beautiful pins that Soraya has put together. I'll put a picture of them up here on the screen. These are her copperstone brooches and as you can see it is a beautiful brooch that could be used as a shawl pin, it could be used as an accessory. It's something that's again so beautifully designed and then along with that as well are some stitch markers with these gorgeous crystals on there too. So I am so delighted to be including something from Malika here in this giveaway. She's a maker that, as I say, I, I've had the, the pleasure to, to buy not only her jewellery in the past, but also meet and see her and chat to her in person. She's a wonderful, wonderful human, and I'm incredibly happy to be including some of her work here as well too. So hopefully you will enjoy receiving that. And um, yeah, it'll be a fantastic addition, not only to bling up your projects a little bit, but also to be able to use that pin and have it keep like little bits of your knitting safe. And last but by no means least, I popped into Tribe Yarns, which is my local LYS, my local LYS, my LYS indeed, local yarn shop over here in southwest London. And when I was there, um, the owner there, who is Millie, also showed me some new things that she'd been working on in terms of their branding. If you're not aware, Tribe Yarn Shop, their branding is just fantastic. Millie's whole aesthetic is something I absolutely adore. But when I was in there, she mentioned that they had these new goodies here. And so let me hold it up for you to see. There we are. So this is her branding here, the Tribe Yarns branding. But what we have here is a little mobile phone stand. So pop this on the back of your handset and it's fairly handset agnostic. So it could be a little iPad, it could be your iPhone, it can be an Android phone, it could be whatever phone or device you so choose. And one, it'll make it slightly easier to handhold, and two, it means it will also be able to stand up. So you'll be able to prop it up whilst you are perhaps knitting along or trying to read or follow a pattern on that device at the same time. And in doing so, you will be able to make use of something that is equally nitty branded. And so I have three of these, I'll be including one of each of them in the giveaways as well. So a huge thank you to Millie for donating these to the giveaway. I think they're adorably cute and I'm delighted to be sharing them with some of you. So there you have it. Our Blame Dungeon It Along prize packages are coming together. I will hopefully have everything with me for the next episode to be able to show you those one last time in person before they go off to their new homes. But if you needed any extra incentive to get chatting, whether that be in the chatter thread over on Ravelry, whether it be using the hashtag on Instagram, or indeed whether it be posting your FOs in the FO thread, very quick word of warning to say, it is one post per person in that FO thread. So please ensure that you're editing your original post rather than creating a new one. I've mentioned this before, but it does mean that I will need to either delete or disregard any subsequent posts that you make. So if you could do that yourselves, that would be wonderful. It always pains me to have to delete other people's work. I really don't enjoy doing it. I know Yelena feels the same. Yelena, who is our wonderful moderator and who I don't shout about and praise enough, but Yelena, I love you dearly. You are an absolute marvel. And thank you so much for the help that you give over on the Ravelry thread. I, oh, you're a bloody legend. Um, but yes, if you could ensure that you're doing that yourselves, that would make our lives an awful lot easier. So we'll talk about those once more next time round, along with the winners from the Blame Dungeon It Along, and I am very much looking forward to sending those goodies on their way. But with no further ado, let's crack on with this episode, because we still have a whole episode's worth of content to get through, albeit potentially a little bit lighter on the knitting than usual. Um, as ever, though, you'll be able to find show notes for this week in the description box below. They will also be over on Ravelry, where I have the Knitting Vicariously podcast group. Please do search for us, join us there. Not only will you be able to take part in a lot of the Blame Dungeon It Along activity that I just referenced, but you'll also be able to to engage in other threads with some truly fabulous human beings. Thank you so much to everyone who takes part over there. It means the absolute world to me. I love seeing the content and the conversations that you are sharing. 
but you'll also be able to find information about this week's episode over on Instagram where I have the Knitting Vicariously Instagram account. There I post one new post every single episode with links to relevant makers and hashtags in there too. So if you do want to follow me over there you'll get a an Instagram version of the show notes and you'll be able to stalk a little bit more readily from that point in time. But with absolutely no further ado, let's get on with this episode. I am going to mention very briefly what it is that I'm wearing. This is not a new finished object, it's not a remotely new finished object, but it is one that I'm just going to reference very, very quickly. This is my Beatnik pullover. It is a free pattern, you heard that right, a free pattern by the Cable Wonder that is Nora Gorn. She is an absolute genius when it comes to designing cables and garments in particular, and this is absolutely no exception. This is, I'll put the full pattern picture up here so you can see it. This is the Beatnik Pullover. It was released with Knitty, which was a publication that published free of charge patterns from a range of fantastic designers, this one being absolutely no exception. This is probably my favourite pattern to ever come out of Knitty. And um, it's an all over cabled pullover. It is um, written to be knit in pieces. However, I did modify it to knit it in the round. And if you give me a second, I will pop up and show it off to you in a little bit more detail. So here you have it, these are the beatnik boobs and this is indeed the beatnik sweater. So you can see here that it is a beautiful design. You have this folded neckband here, so in other words the ribbing is knit twice as long, folded back on itself and then bound off here on the inside. I love this neckline, it's one of my favourite things about the sweater and I think it sets the whole thing off absolutely perfectly. You then have these incredibly dramatic cables down the side, these sort of bigger chunkier cables. I'm very conscious that that's a good move. Nice. <laughs> you have these kind of chunkier cables down the side here and then more of a sort of slightly refined, more delicate lattice work here in the middle. There are columns of twisted stitches which, while it looks very impactful, can, depending on your technique, be a bit of a bastard to knit and then you have this twisted rib down here at the bottom. It is a bottom up sweater, as I mentioned it is designed to be knit in pieces, I modified it to knit it in the round and similarly the design itself has you knit the cables on both the front and the back but as you can see I cheated in that I did the um Oh, crumbs, I never remember the difference. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is seed stitch rather than moss stitch on the basis that it's, oh, I don't know. Americans and Brits seem to have two slightly different terms for it. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can decide for yourself what it is. It's the one where you're working the same stitches over two rows and then changing it. So it's purl two, uh, or rather purl one, knit one, next row, purl one, knit one, and then the row after that, knit one, purl one same row after that. So it's the one where you're doing it every two rows as opposed to every row. You tell me which version it is. I can never remember. It's that one. Um, so I knit that all over. Now I talk about this pullover in more significant detail back in episode seven-ish, I think, of the podcast. So do feel free to head back there to see a little bit more about it. I will, however, confess to the fact that I made a fairly monumental cock up with this pullover. And that was when it came to shaping the sleeves. You may well be able to see that here, this sleeve cap sits rather, rather sort of far forward for a sleeve cap. It should really be in and around here. Yeah, I fucked up the shaping. Don't worry about it. I'm still not entirely sure how I managed to fuck up the shaping, and yet I did. I did it consistently, it's on both sides, so you know, that's some small help-ish. <laughs> but yeah, it does mean that, you know, the, the sleeve cap comes slightly further forward. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. Still wear this jumper, still love this jumper. It is one of my favourite makes, and part of that is because obviously it's a it's an investment to do quite this level of cabling, even if it is only on the front of the sweater, but I love this sweater so, so much. I have thought to myself on multiple occasions how wonderful it would be to have a second version. I'm sorely tempted to have that be the end destination of this Highland worsted down here. That would be amazing. There's also some plucky scholar here in this sort of slightly slightly olivey green colourway that I'm quite tempted by. There are so many options. Um, at some point there will be a second beatnik in my future. 
today is not that day but um yeah we're working to it as for this this yarn is actually it's madeleine tosh it's worsted mcn so it's a merino cashmere nylon blend it means it is a little bit pilly as you may be able to tell i do depill this sweater um every few times that I wear it and certainly it's not um, sort of struggling to sort of hold up if you like it's still as structurally as strong as it always was but it does tend to get a little bit pilly what with the cashmere in here the colorway for this is Lannister gold and I'm pretty sure I did alternate I will have on one of the side seams I'll have twisted um, as I was alternating skeins on the way down uh, or the way up rather bottom-up sweater um, but yeah it's um it's definitely a favorite of mine however i will say because the worsted yarn the madeleine tosh worsted yarn is a worsted sorry is a worsted spun yarn yes so it is the sort of more traditional superwash type ply structure it means it's quite dense this is quite a heavy pullover and having quite a heavy pullover that has three quarter length sleeves it's not the most practical so i think next time round i'd be very tempted to knit it in a woolen weight in a woolen spun yarn rather which is something that's a bit lighter um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that one because I am not an expert on spinning or ply structure at all um, but also too because I don't want to sort of spend too much time on something I've already talked about but um, I would be tempted to knit it in a sort of lighter weight woolen spun yarn something that's a bit more like the Highland Worsted or, or um, Shelter potentially um, and then have a lighter weight sweater but also I'd be quite tempted to do full length sleeves on it just to make it nice and cosy but um, yes love this sweater absolutely love it um pretty sure i knit the size 40 there will be some details about it on my project page and i'll make sure those are linked below but yeah this is a great sweater for the winter months it is a little bit warmer even though as i say my wrists do get a little bit chilly but it's been perfect for doing a little bit of knitting over the last few weeks and it's fair to say a little bit of knitting just about sums it up. The good news is that I do have an FO and this is very much a continuation of the previous episode where I spammed you a little bit with the baby knits. Now the good news is that I can talk freely about these because by the time this podcast goes up I will have attended the baby shower and I will have gifted these all to my friend with the exception of the one that's still a work in progress. We'll come back to that one but in the meantime I do have an FO to share and that is the flax light pullover that I showed you last week. Now I'll put a picture of it up here on the screen so you can see this is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. It is a pattern that is so ridiculously versatile when it comes to its sizing and its general kind of fit and who you can make this for. It is sized from newborn all the way up to a very generously sized um, pattern, sort of sizing range for adults as well. I believe it's somewhere in the range of about 60 inches is the largest chest size. It is incredible the range that this pattern goes to and it is the newborn size, the smallest size that I knit for my friend. Look at how tiny and diddy this is. It is adorable. But this is my version of the flax light pullover. Let me hold it up here for you to see. You're getting a little bit of shade from the camera there. Apologies for that. But yes, you can see that I have knit the garter stitch detail here on the sleeves all the way down. I have the ribbing here at the top, the ribbing at the base, and it's just adorable. If I hold it here, it kind of looks like it's adult human sized, but you know, it's just a bit of the old Lord of the Rings special effects Gandalf Frodo going on here. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's definitely not me sized <laughs> not remotely no it is tiny and diddy and the yarn that I used is just stunning I mentioned last time that my friend is um, not finding out the sex of her baby prior to them being born and so I wanted to ensure I was knitting something fairly gender neutral to be fair even if she had found out the sex of the baby I probably would have gone with something neutral anyway that's just how I roll but this yarn is just stunning this is fine fish yarns it is a sock yarn base from fine fish yarns who is terry she is a yarn dyer based over in northern ireland and i absolutely adore this this is her moonraker colorway and 
as you can see, I know I've hold, held it up already, but just to demonstrate to you, it's this perfect neutral base with slightly sort of taupey tones in the background, but these little speckles are just astonishing. They are tiny little micro speckles, everything from navies to reds to teals to some little specks of gold in there as well, and it's just it's stunning. I love this so, so much. I have blocked it. It has blocked it beautifully. In terms of needle sizes, I used a, um, let me think, 2.75 millimetre needle, I think, for the uh, neck band and a three millimetre needle for the ribbing on both the hem and the cuffs. Um, three millimetre, I'm fairly sure, is a US size Oh geez, I never get this right. A US size two, I think, I think. Um, and then the main body of the sweater was knit on a three and a half, which is a US size four. And so, yeah, it's just, it's adorable and it's diddy and it's cute and I love it. And if you're in the market for a relatively speedy gift knit pattern, for a tiny baby, or indeed you're in the market for a pattern that you can use as a grown ass human um, and you don't mind the fact that it's fingering weight and it's going to take a fair old while if it's a bigger size that you're going for, then this is definitely, definitely a strong contender for a first sweater pattern. So there we are. That is this week's finished object, Flax Light in Fine Fish Yarns. Last time round I showed you the other things that I had been working on for that little bub-to-be. We had Elijah the elephant with all of his concerning cannot be unseen work in progress shots that made the whole thing very juvenile. <laughs> And also the Mignon cardigan from Loop London, which is a beautiful little A-line cardigan with some cables on it. Love that very, very much. There was a final pattern that I'm working on, and indeed, I am still working on it. Now, this is not going to be finished for the baby shower, which is this afternoon, because I am pretty sure I'm going to run out of yarn and also because it's fair to say I may have run out of steam a little bit on it as well this week. It will get done, it absolutely will get done, but as I mentioned last time I am knitting the Sirdar Snowflake all-in-one teddy bear onesie and I will put the picture up on the screen and there is not a single person amongst you who's not going to feel a tiny bit no about this because I get it. It's adorable. It's absolutely adorable. It is, of course, an absolute fucker to knit. <laughs> largely because of the yarn itself. I'm knitting it with the recommended yarn because there's really no getting away from it. Um, I'm knitting it with Sirdar Snowflake Chunky. I will put it here for you to be able to see and appreciate the challenges of knitting with this yarn. This is essentially, I mean it's basically fun fur. Um, it is a kind of stronger core with this floof, extensive floof around it and um, it is 100% polyester. Now the good news is, of course, when it comes to making baby clothes, having something that can be bunged in the machine, that can be bunged in the dryer if you choose to, with absolutely no concerns about it holding up or it coming out in any way misshapen, is totally a priority. I get that. It's part of the reason that I want this in my friend's life. Also the fact that it is Freaking adorable, let's be very clear. Um, but yeah, it's just a pain in the arse to work with. And I thought I was doing well, I thought I was conquering this. So I do have the back portion of it is here. This is the other thing is it's knit in pieces. Fuck that noise so hard. When you've got something that is this fiddly, you want me to knit it in pieces as well? Fuck off. Anyway, <laughs> so we have the back piece here. So we've got the neck band that's on the stitch holder. We have the shaping for the shoulders. And then we have, as you can see, all the way down here to the feet at the bottom. There is a right side, there is a wrong side, as I showed you last time. It's very hard to tell which is which. Um, but yes, to those of you who mentioned this already, I have put stitch markers on, or pins rather, on the right side. So I know the difference between the two, and that is helping immeasurably. I also have, and I'm working on, the front section of this just now. So if I hold this up, you'll be able to see where I am at the moment. So the front section has, um, so you're gonna be able to see it. I mean, you know, fiddly, fiddly as fuck. So we have two feet again, we have all of the ends in the world, 
and then we have a flap here that I'm knitting. So the front has buttons down it. So of course that means the front needs to be knit in two pieces. So I have this side and then I will knit the other side up from here. I'll then put buttons on the front and we'll go from there. But as testament to how fiddly this yarn is, the biggest problem that I have with it is it's really hard to see what you're doing. Case in point, I was putting this away last night going, right, I'm done with this for today. I need to focus on doing something else for a little bit. And um, realised as I was putting it away that I've actually dropped a stitch. So this is going to be a little bit difficult for you to see. Let me see if I can zoom in on it though. So here, and I've pulled this out, I actually had this sitting on a needle but I've just taken it off for now. Here is the stitch that I dropped part way down it. But in all honesty, it's really bloody hard to tell. So when you are um, stitching along quite happily, because the core of the yarn is so kind of in amongst all of this floof. So as you can see here, it's really easy to put your needle through the floof and not go through the core of the yarn and end up with dropped stitches like this little fucker here. So I will go back and I will remedy this and make sure that we're not gonna have an unfortunate hole halfway through this garment. But um, yeah, it's, oh, it's a pain in the arse. Now, the good news is that I am getting there with it. But as I mentioned, I am definitely going to run out of yarn. I have this much left of the third ball. I then have this fourth ball and I still need to do the other half of the front, two sleeves and the hood. And the hood, I remember taking quite a lot of yarn. So definitely going to need to order more. Definitely not going to get it done today definitely going to have to give it to her slightly later. But in fairness, I have three other things that I'll be giving to her this afternoon and I am sure she will love those all the same. So stay tuned because this fucker is going to get finished and I will stop referring it to a fucker. <laughs> I will stop referring to it as a fucker at some point. <laughs> Just not soon. Um, but yes, this is going to get finished. I will get it done and it will be going to a tiny brand new little baby at some point in the very not distant future at all. My friend is due in a couple of weeks time. So um, yes, I will make sure that I have this banged out and ready to go. And um, then if anyone near me decides to have a child ever, ever, ever again, rest assured, you are not getting this. <laughs> I will put you in touch with my friends and you know, because this is gonna outlast any kind of nuclear apocalypse in terms of this yarn. <laughs> So we can almost guarantee that this should be able to be handed around amongst people. So if nothing else, let's go with the fact that I'm knitting an heirloom. Let's let's put a positive spin on it, shall we? And so that is it for works in progress this week. I, I told you I was light on the knitting content. I haven't had a huge amount of time, but what I have, I've really tried to plow into getting those done. I've put maybe another seven or eight rows on the raglan shaping of my hard cider sweater that I showed last time. I will bring that back next time because I'm hoping to have a fair bit more done on that. And um, for those of you that tuned in previously, it's knit out of nightshades, Harrisville Designs nightshades in the cinder colorway, which is the almost kind of all over black with a little bit of really beautiful kind of coppery orange um, blended in. It's such a stunning yarn. It's a beautiful sweater design. I'm very excited to have that on my needles and be progressing with it a little bit further. But in the meantime, I do have some acquisitions to share. And part of the reason I mentioned and linger a little bit on hard cider is because I think it's fair to say that 2020 might be the year of like gentle gothness <laughs> in amongst all of this, because um, it's fair to say there's a bit of a theme here with my acquisitions. Now, these are acquisitions that I made actually prior to the new year. These are acquisitions I made in December, but given last podcast was fairly jam-packed, I didn't quite have time to cover them off. But um, in, in hindsight and on reflection, there's, there's something of a theme in amongst all this, and um, you might be able to see what it is. So I mentioned when I purchased the Cinder yarn from Loop London that um, when I was at Loop, I realized that they had a sail basket and the Nightshades yarn was actually in the sail basket. Now, that being almost unheard of, I grabbed the sweater quantity, scuttled away with it and cast it on pretty much immediately as we discussed. I was there with my friend Jess, who is Film Fromage over on Instagram. 
Hi Jess. Um, she came over to visit in December and we did a little bit of a yarn crawl around the yarn shops of North London. So we started out at Knit With Attitude, headed over to Wild and Woolly and from there down to Loop, which was a fantastic little tour. And I did really well in not buying any yarn until I got to Loop and then fell down pretty hard with a sweater quantity of nightshades in their sale basket got myself home, thought to myself, ah, oh, good, I got that out of my system. I mean, did they, did they have any other colours? Well, you know, I, I, I got very distracted by the cinder and just, you know, did they, did they have any other colours that I could have, you know, contemplated, looked at, considered whilst I was there? Or, you know, I mean, I was feeling very, very single-minded about the, uh, the, the cinder when I was there. So, um, yeah, might have, might have just had a quick little look on the Instagram, uh, on the on the website rather, and realised that there were a couple of other colours. Now, um, this is a colourway that actually I already have. It's the only colourway of nightshades that I've had any of in the past, and this is the static colour. I will endeavour to show it off here for you on the screen, but of course, bearing in mind that this is black yarn, it's always going to be a little bit of a challenge. But this is static. This is the black base yarn that is blended with white. And I actually bought two other skeins of this at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival to make the Fukuro pullover, which is a pattern by Whitney Hayward. I showed that off a lot last year. Um, it's still a pattern that I intend to make, but this yarn having something that is a true neutral black with a little bit of light grey or white in there is definitely something that's very very useful so I figured to have this in my stash as a potential hat or a garment um, sort of contrasting colour is never a bad thing so I may have nabbed a skein of that but I also nabbed a skein in this colourway and if I put the two together you'll be able to see the difference. This here is Fever Dream. And Fever Dream, as you'll see when I put the two side by side, is blended here with red. So rather than the cinder, which is a kind of orangey tone to it, this is the one with a very true red in there too. And it is stunning. So again, this is the Black Cormo base. It is um, grown in Montana, spun in New Hampshire, and it is Harrisville Designs. It's Cormo wool as the base, woolen spun, which I sort of touched on a little bit earlier, so it's lovely and light and lofty, and it is a DK weight with roughly 250 yards to 100 grams. It is so squishy, and it's not a superwash, it is very much a woolly wool, but at the same time, I have no issues whatsoever with wearing this on my face, on my neck, anywhere that's sensitive. Cormo wool is really not in the tiniest bit scratchy in my personal opinion, and this is just such a ridiculously versatile shade. So um, again, one skein, it could be a hat, a cowl, an accessory of some sort, I just, I love it so, so much. I couldn't resist the bargain of getting these two. And so, yeah, my my slightly goth-leaning tendencies, which I'm pleased to say was probably Jess's influence, no least, um, started to be brought out with these two here. I'm not sure that Loop still has any of their sale stock in, uh, or on their website rather. Uh, I know that I bought these over the Christmas period, so may have cleared them out of these two colorways with these two skeins. Um, worth checking but if not I would highly recommend if nightshades is something that you want to get hold of that these colours and the depth of colour that's offered by these it just it's astonishing I love this yarn an awful awful lot and so you'd be forgiven for thinking that's where it ends right because you know you've you've dipped a toe a little bit into the gothy world but clearly Caroline you're someone that's all about the colour so you know oh, you're never really going to be a goth but you know I, in 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 the words of one of my favourite Tim Minchin songs, I, I can have a dark side, definitely. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Tim Minchin is a fabulous, just hilarious Australian comedian. He uh, does a lot of musical comedy. He's an incredibly gifted and talented musician. He has written music for musicals such as Matilda, which is on here in the West End, and I believe Broadway as well. It's one of my absolute favourites, not least because the words, the music, they're so incredibly well written. Um, but also his comedy, his musical comedy is amazing. Go onto YouTube, search for him. You, again, foul-mouthed, hilarious, not safe for children, but just an absolute bloody genius. But uh, yeah, in his in his words, I, I can have a dark side. I can be goth. I can be, no, but I can, I can 
pretend and want to and and do all of these things whilst also being somewhat irrationally chirpy um irritatingly so sometimes yes um but when i met up with folks over at tribe between christmas and new year so um creative ceci is someone who or creative cc is uh, someone who I've had the great pleasure of meeting a couple of times now. I met her at Rhinebeck, just gone. I met her briefly at EYF last year as well. And um, she is an absolute delight. She's a whirlwind of a human being of just positivity, creativity, uh, female empowerment, diversity, and all of the amazing causes that she champions so, so wonderfully. She is just an absolute powerhouse in person. She's amazing. And um, I spotted over on Instagram that she was posting some pictures from London. I was like, oh my goodness, you're in London, sent a little cheeky wave back. And um, she mentioned that she was going to be in Tribe Yarns that afternoon. So of course, I did what any reasonable human would do. I made plans, made space in my diary and made my way over to Tribe and was lucky enough to encounter not only her but a series of just truly incredible inspiring women who were there. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on it later on when I talk about one of the um, pattern recommendations for this week but um, I will include a picture here from Instagram of all of the amazing humans that were in the room aside from Millie who is the owner of Tribe Yarns and Carmen who owns a yarn story over in Bath which is another of my absolute favourite yarn stores. But as well as that, there's also Soraya, who is Malika Jewelry that I mentioned earlier on as part of our giveaway. There was um, Jeanette Sloan was there, Felicity, who is Knit Sonic, was there. You had uh, Lorna Hamilton Brown was there. You had Jimmy Ditz. You ha I'm going to forget someone if I try and reel off all of the names. And so I will include the picture up here on the screen. And um, please do feel free to pop on over to Instagram where I talk a little bit about that in... Um, I think it's a story highlight that would be in, but um, uh, or one of the posts that I'm tagged in, but I had such a wonderful afternoon there, getting to spend time with just the most incredible group of human beings. And um, more than that, I got a chance to peruse Millie's new store. So Tribe Yarns was previously in a different location in Richmond. It was uh, on the same street, but just at the opposite side of the road uh, with a sort of longer and narrower shop. As it is now, she has a gorgeous new premises and those premises are high, like high ceilings and light and there is an upstairs and it is absolutely perfect for Millie and her business. And um, so, you know, when you're in a yarn shop, you go, you peruse gently and um, turns out you go full goth at that point and you buy a sweater quantity of what is ostensibly black fucking yarn. <laughs> <laughs> now this is yarn that again it's been on my kind of general radar for quite a while it is yarn by the fiber company it's called lore it's a yarn base that they launched i believe in the early part of 2019 or at least sort of late 2018 perhaps and it is um based here in england so it's produced here in england in yorkshire and it is made from lamb's wool and it's romney lamb's wool at that it is again just beautiful. It's a sort of DK to maybe very light worsted weight I imagine it could work up at. In terms of yardage it's pretty close to a DK in that sense. It's 250 meters or 273 yards to 100 grams and the colorway that I have here is bold and I hope it is showing up on your screen in the sort of exceptional depth of colour that there is in person because I said it's a black yarn, it's really not. If anything, it is the deepest, deepest sort of teal navy imaginable. It is just astonishing. Um, the camera's kind of overexposing it slightly to be able to show you it, so it almost looks a bit more navy than it is in person. It's definitely, if I bring it all the way back here, it's definitely this just incredibly deep and rich colour. I love it so much. Um, this is going to be the perfect backdrop for something that is either gloriously cabled. I've talked about the, I think it's the Pinasse pullover that again, I'll put up here on the screen um, that I've seen that was in one of the liner magazines, maybe issue nine-ish. I'm very, very tempted with that. This would also be the most amazing background and base for a Jennifer Steingast sweater. 
I know that she's done a couple of new designs recently, the likes of Hinterland, for instance, which is beautiful. So again, this could be something that would work there. It's such a versatile yarn and sweater, I'm sure I will find a use for it. So I did buy a sweaters quantity of this. I did buy five skeins, um, which is more than enough for me to be able to knit something with a contrasting color, maybe in a yoke, or I think the five skeins should be just about enough for the Pinacea pullover as well, but I couldn't resist. And so, um, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a little bit of like accidental goth in 2020 going on here, but um, I think it's fair to say it's mostly try hard goth status. I'm nowhere in Jess, who's film fromage, or indeed Kristen, who who I still think of as being, you know, goth adjacent. I'm I'm nowhere near that wheelhouse as my stash would probably attest to, but I have I have some dark side desires, definitely definitely. I mean it probably only really extends to knitting if I'm honest but, <laughs> but there we go so very excited to be working with this at some point. And so those are my acquisitions for this episode. Moving right along into some more vicarious knitting and a little bit of pattern prettiness. Just before I get into this episode's recommendations, I want to go back and touch on one thing that I mentioned last time round. So those of you who watched the previous episode may remember that I recommended a sweater called Caroline. Oh, so aptly named, um, which is knit by the wonderful Airy, I say knit by, designed by Airy TML over on Instagram. She has some truly stunning designs. This is no exception. It's a top down all over cable piece that is absolutely beautiful. Now, I mentioned very briefly in passing that the yarn it had been knit with um, was perhaps a little bit different. It was slightly hand spun. I will confess at that time I hadn't really looked into the yarn properly, but thank you so, so much to the person who commented. Um, apology, I forget if it was in the Ravelry thread or in the YouTube comments, but thank you so much for doing so, who directed me to look into this yarn in a little bit more detail, because the yarn that's used is really interesting. It's by a company called Nomad, sorry, Nomad News, which is a yarn brand that promotes sustainable yarn for very, very good purposes. This is a company that's been set up to um, promote, I think it's as part of an NGO, they've been set up to um, promote well-being and support women who are milling, hand spinning, and indeed helping to produce this yarn in parts of the world where this is really just kind of a stable income for them. And so I would really, really recommend you go, you have a look at the website. I will make sure I link it in the show notes below and find out a little bit more about this yarn. It's very, very strongly focused on um, slow fashion, on sustainability, and indeed on supporting women in parts of the world where this is very much a livelihood for them. And so it's an incredible cause. It is beautiful looking yarn. Um, it does have a price point that reflects that, but obviously given it is such an excellent cause, that seems entirely valid. And so if this is a, um, a cause that you're interested in supporting, I would very, very highly recommend that you check this out. If nothing else, there is a beautiful sweater that's been designed explicitly with this yarn in mind. If you could combine the two and create something that is going to be absolutely beautiful, it's definitely worth checking it out. And so again, I will include a link to that in the show notes below. I would highly recommend you stop on over and take a quick look. But moving into recommendations for this time around, it will not surprise you in the slightest to know that there is a garment front and centre with this. If this is something that I stumbled across when I was scrolling through Ravelry. I actually popped in there very briefly to try and find one of the previous, or sorry, one of the, the next patterns that I'm going to talk about. And as I was scrolling through my sort of most recently looked at, most recently viewed, somehow came across this pattern as well. And good lord, it is beautiful. This is the Tsubaki Pullover by Hiroko Fukatsu. She is the designer of some incredible patterns, including the Hito Fude cardigan, which did a massive, uh, I mean, it's it's one of those patterns that I've seen so many people knit. I haven't knit one personally, but again, it's so ingenious with its construction, with its design, with its versatility. There's no wonder there are as many um, finished items of that as there are. But this is, again, same designer, slightly different take on it. And you would be forgiven in the pattern picture that I've got up here 
for mistaking it a little bit for beatnik. There is definitely some kind of similarity to the two, particularly with these big chunky cables down either side. It's a look that I absolutely adore. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'm thinking about knitting a second beatnik. This is probably a strong contender for why I would knit this instead, partly because of its construction. This is a top-down garment that is knit all in one piece, and the designer explicitly states on the pattern page that it's designed to be knit with as little kind of seaming or, or any kind of after work required as possible and uh, as few ends as possible. We like that. Um, and so I'm so intrigued by the design and by the construction that this is definitely something I want to look into. It looks as though it could be a little bit kind of contiguous and I don't want to kind of cast aspersions as to how this is worked up. Please do take a look at it properly by nipping on over to the pattern page, but it's it's really quite exciting. So I am very sorely tempted to have a crack at this at some point this year. It's knit out of sport weight yarn. So gauge wise, you're aiming for about 22 stitches per four inches. Now you could potentially get that out of a fairly dense DK weight. Um, it's definitely a little bit too dense for it to be a comfortable fingering weight, but um, the sort of sport to, to DK, depending on your gauge, is probably about right. And I can imagine it being so incredibly cozy. Sizing wise, it does all right. It's from around about a 35 inch bust up to a 59 inch bust. The pattern um, does recommend a little bit of ease in there. So I believe anything up to about five or six inches of ease. So that obviously takes it down a little bit at the upper end of the scale. And so ideally there'd be at least another couple of sizes in there. But if you were comfortable knitting it with a little bit less ease, um, then it might still be a pattern that's worth you considering. But I will say definitely do go on, have a look at some of the pattern pictures it's one of those sweaters that depending on the fit and the body that it's on it can look quite different um, and indeed depending on the colours that it's been knit with it looks absolutely beautiful in just a vast vast range of them so yes very very seriously considering this as a cast on for this year. My second pattern pick this time around is actually another two-parter. So um, I have lusted after the first half of this for a little while. And finally, the designer came out with the second. But the second part of this to talk about first words is the Emmelyn cowl. This is a pattern by Sari Nordland. I'll put it up here on the screen. Longer term viewers will know I have a small obsession with Sari Nordland. I love so many of her designs and this is no exception. This is such a beautiful kind of, I'm never quite sure if it's a flower or if it's a snowflake, but it's that kind of traditional-ish design, uh, traditional sort of Scandinavian style colourwork design, but with a bit of a spin on it that looks, makes it look modern, partly because of the way that it's been done with that slightly variegated yarn. It is absolutely charming. I love this so, so much. So this cowl is knit obviously in the round and then seamed together. So it is double sided the whole way round. It is beautiful. It would be quite an investment in terms of the colour work, but at the same time, the finished object is going to be astonishing. Um, this is also part of a set. So she's previously released the Emmeline hat, which I'll also include a picture of here. I'm not usually one for matchy matchy, but in this instance, I mean, you could potentially invert the colours so it would look a little bit different between the two, or indeed you could just go whole hog and have a full matching set. But either way, I think this is such a beautiful design, or both are such beautiful designs. And um, yeah, it would be beautiful worked up in some sock yarn and then a nice contrasting colour to go with it. As you'd expect, it's worked up in fingering weight, so it is a sock yarn that you're looking at there, and gauge-wise, it's definitely um, something that's a little bit on the lighter side, so you're working it up. I believe the recommended needle size is a 3.25 millimeter, which is a US size three. So some lovely, kind of lightweight, but still quite dense color work around your neck would be lovely and cozy. So yes, definitely worth checking those out if you're in the market for a little bit of color work to kick off your year. And last, but by absolutely no means least, I am not attending Vogue Knitting Live this weekend. You may have established that. Plenty of others are, however, and amongst those are some of the incredible humans that I was able to meet at this event at Tribe last month, as I mentioned. So when Creative Ceci was over, we had the opportunity to meet up with her and a few other incredible 
incredible humans who are all contributing to a pattern called Our Common Threads. So Our Common Threads is a cowl design that's been put together by a number of humans. So I'm going to read out the names and I am going to have to read them unfortunately because I am not going to remember all of them and I want to ensure that I'm giving full credit where it's due. So you have Louis Boria, who I believe is Brooklyn Boy Knits over on Instagram. You have Lorna Hamilton Brown, Anna Campos, Felicity, who is um, Felix Ford, who is Knit Sonic. You have Diana Ivy, who is the dyer behind Lady Dye Yarns. You have uh, Celia Nelson Hurt, who is Creator CC. You have Jeanette Sloan and Angela Tong. And all of those amazing designers have collaborated together to come up with a cowl that I'll put up here on the screen. This is a cowl with a series of different motifs. Every single one of them was chosen by a different designer. And the idea is that this is coming together, choosing these motifs that resonate so completely with the individuals and creating a cowl that brings all of these together. Now, I believe most of the designers are part of a uh, an advisory group for Vogue Knitting Live, and indeed, many of them went on to speak at a panel at Vogue Knitting over the course of this weekend, one of the many things that I'm genuinely sad to have missed out on. But as part of that, there was a charity that they nominated um, that the proceeds for this would go towards, which I believe is the Hendrick Martin Institute, yes. Um, which is a um, charity that go that spend a huge amount of time and energy supporting LGBTQ youth. And so because of that work, because of the advocacy that they do, this pattern was a means of generating funds and putting some excellent, excellent funds towards that incredible cause. I was lucky enough to see some work in progress versions of this back in December when I visited Tribe. I know that Lorna had this on the needles. I know Jeanette was working up to including it there too. And I know that Cece was, again, working up to having it there on the needles. So hopefully everyone who was working on it or intending to work on it was able to get it finished in time for this weekend. And um, yeah, it's such a an excellent cause first and foremost. It's such a, a wonderful idea and intent behind the design itself and it's a beautiful looking cowl. So the way that it's been worked up with all these different motifs, whether you choose to use two colours throughout or whether you choose to create a series of different colour panels by using different colours, I think it's absolutely gorgeous in every single way. It's knit using DK weight yarn, although with the cowl you can be fairly flexible with that as to whether you choose to use fingering weight and have something that's perhaps slightly thinner, slightly drapier, depending on the gauge that you use, or indeed DK weight for something quite sturdy and just lovely and cosy up around your neck. And similarly, in terms of needle size, just checking, the recommended needle size is four millimeters, which again, works perfectly with DK. It's a US size six. So again, a really, really excellent cause, a gorgeous pattern and a cowl that you would be incredibly proud to wear in all senses. And so those are my pattern picks for this episode. But as ever, the inspiration, it does not stop there. No, because we are moving into the penultimate, I'm kind of sad to say, Blame Dungeon It Along Gallery. Now, this is where we showcase the amazing work that you've been doing in frankly, my name. So I will take at least a tiny bit of credit along with the accountability for it. This is part of the Blame Dundant Along, as I say, make along, whether it be crochet, whether it be knitting, whether it be any craft of your choosing, sewing for instance, where you get an opportunity to showcase some of the work that you have been doing. And so I... <sighs> I always struggle to, to, to kind of explain and, and really elaborate on just how amazing it is to dip into these threads, the hashtag, and see the work that you're doing and just, you know, kind of try and explain how much joy it gives me. It's difficult to do so, but hopefully the fact that I'm sitting here with a ridiculous grin on my face hopefully does some of that work. And so I will take this grin and hopefully share it with the rest of you now while we showcase this incredible round of talent from all of you who are taking part in the Blame Dungeon Little Long Gallery. Here are some of the projects you've been working on in the last few weeks.
I am genuinely running out of words to extol the incredible just work that you're doing and so I'm gonna stop using all of these superlatives and instead just say it's fucking brilliant and I love you all. <laughs> So yes, if you've been inspired by something here, please do feel free to use the last couple of weeks that you have to take full accountability, put it on me and cast away with our customary wild abandon because, you know, it's got to end at some point. If nothing else, it just means that I can get some prizes out the door and we can all start to move on with, you know, a little bit more obligation um, and just start to kick things off. But I love this time of year. I love doing this knit along, make along, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. But that is pretty much it for this time around. As ever, I really, really do hope you've enjoyed this episode. You will be able to find show notes in all of the relevant places. And please do ensure that you are posting your finished items, your works in progress, and anything else that's relevant in all the places for the Blame Dungeon It Along over the next few weeks. I will be closing those threads on the weekend of the 1st of February. So I'll give you until midnight whatever time you happen to be in on the 31st to get your bits and pieces uploaded and then I'll be drawing winners ahead of the next episode. It only really remains therefore for me to wish you a wonderful rest of day, rest of week. I hope your knitting is keeping you happy and fulfilled but if for whatever reason it isn't I really hope you have the opportunity to knit vicariously. Keep on keeping on and I will see you again very soon. Bye. Hello there Pickles, it is now much later on in the day. I am just in the door after my friend's baby shower. It was a wonderful afternoon. She loved the knitted gifts, I'm delighted to say. She knows there's one more still to come, but then in fairness, there's also a tiny person still to come. So you know, I feel like I feel like we're just about even right now. But um, yeah, it was a really lovely afternoon. I am stuffed full of food. We had afternoon tea, it was delicious. But now I really feel like I need a nap. However, I cannot nap. For now, I need to make a start on editing this afternoon's podcast. And so I'm going to be cracking on with that for a little bit. I was under a bit of time pressure earlier on today, so I managed to get through most of this morning's recording without making too many gaffes. So I figured we might be a little bit light on outcasts, outcasts, outtakes, clearly. Now would be a good time to record, but um, yeah, a little bit light on outtakes, so I just thought I would pop in and say hello, and uh, yeah, this is a little bit of a summary for this afternoon, but um, the good news is I do have a cat friend, and I know a number of people have been asking to see a little bit more Hobbs content, so you are very welcome. There you go, buddy. You're internet famous now. People want to see you. I'm going to give the people what they want. You're going to give the people what they want. Purring. A little bit of purring, a little bit of slow blinking. Oh yeah. Say bye, Hobbsy. Such a diva. All about the soft focus. Psh. Cats, man. <laughs> <laughs>